Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. As was just introduced, my name is Hee Jin Lee of the Advanced Drug Quality Division of the Drug Evaluation Department. I'm going to talk to you about the validation of analytical procedure and the uh, analytical uh, development uh, related guidelines. And these are the contents that I'm going to be covering today. And in this presentation, I will explain about uh, the uh, overview of ICH Q2 and a Q14. And I'm also going to talk about two key points related to the revisions in Q2. And I'm also going to be covering the basic concepts of Q14. And there are new terminologies related to Q Q14 and, or glossary, uh, that is. And I am going to be uh, covering uh, some definitions related to uh, this uh, glossary. And so I will be, and please, uh, I have also a reference that I say Q2 and Q4, the step four uh, presentations. And I have also uh, referenced uh, some uh, submission and approval related uh, data so that and so uh, that this uh, presentation can be more uh, useful to you. And uh, Q2, uh, Q14 uh, is about uh, describes and development and the validation activities during the life cycle of an analytical procedure that is used for the assessment of the quality of a drug products as well as drug substances. And if you look at the linkage between Q2 and Q14, in uh, Q14, uh, deals uh, with the prior knowledge as well as the existing uh, uh, method of development uh, materials and also uh, additional uh, validation items and and the validation of protocols that is created based on Q2, of course, and the validation of anal analysis is conducted based on, of course, that protocol. And the reports are, of course, based on, on these tests and whether the parameters have been appropriate and whether uh, the, uh, the test was done within uh, the range uh, would be uh, described appropriately uh, described uh, within uh, the, uh, the Q14. Uh, and uh, this would be, of course, used uh, for the testing method or the uh, analytical method for the, uh, the lifetime of the, the products. And I, I thought about, you know, which would be better for me to cover whether Q2 or Q14. And I thought it would be better to cover Q2 that because it is something that we are more uh, familiar with. And these are what are updated in Q2 as well as uh, newly added. And they are, as you can see, and of uh, the validation during the life cycle of an analytical procedure and the demonstration of stability indicator on properties. And these are uh, proper, uh, this, uh, there are some new glossary here. And so I'm going to talk about this and the consideration of the multivariate analytical procedures and also the annexes. They have been newly uh, added. And the purpose of the Q2 guideline uh, is because the purpose is to uh, cover all the of uh, considerations that need to be uh, included in the uh, validation, and and also the the scope of the guideline is, hasn't changed as uh, is uh, same as before and as for the linkage between q2 and q14 i've covered them already and however there's a new concept that has been added and that is the glossary that is related to the life time or the life cycle validation and also the validation test uh, related uh, items, or well, the table for that has been updated. And also the reporting uh, scope has also been uh, updated in terms of the test uh, types. And uh, here, this is the validation study design and, and evaluation. The figure here you see is what I've just described before. And here the validation uh, protocol and the, val and the validation test is different. And that is done according 
according to the protocol. So that follows a Q2. So that is the so that is the validation test and the validation study is to follow Q14. This is going to be based on the prior knowledge as well as the developed material, and also the Q2 a validation test results. So it's it's looking at the overall uh, implement. It's look at the overall picture. And uh, this is a table that's something that you're already quite used to because, uh, and uh, compared to the previous uh, uh, version. And there is something called uh, performance uh, characteristics. And uh, this used to be known as the uh, validation uh, parameters here in Korea and about the range, about the linearity. Well, on the, on the they were shown on the table, and within the range, there were this concept of linearity, and the lower range uh, limits have been uh, included to represent the overall uh, range. So what this means is that, so this range depending on the concentration, the response of that is going to be linear as well as non-linear. And that is why they have replaced the word linearity with range here. So that is the gist of it. And also about the test methods or the analytical methods. And there is a reportable uh, ranges. Well, it, nothing much have changed. However, when it comes to the solution, more as uh, specific information has been included here. Whether it's immediate release, whether this is a modified release, in terms of the contents related to the lower limits have been described in more details. And about the, the solution and test, well, the, uh, the, uh, the, the points in testing could be quite a, a multi, there could be a multiple of them. So the dissolution, uh, the test of points have been included here as part of the dissolution uh, tests or the uh, details of the dissolution test. Well, this is the Korean version. And so here uh, you, you can see the comparison between the R1 of the Q2 and the R2 of the Q2. And about a stability indicating test, this is uh, this is a terminology that is being described here on this slide, and this is a validated uh, quantitative analytical procedure that can detect changes in relevant quality attributes of a product uh, during a storage. And and so if you look at so what? So in order to see if a test is appropriate as a stability indicating test, we would see uh, we would do the testing with the samples that contain relevant uh, degradation products. So there could be a spiking, and there could be a stress conditions applied uh, samples in order to. Uh, and those are the examples of such samples. And also a multivariate analytical procedure has been uh, added. And there are two validation or two steps of such test. One is related to model calibration and the other is related to model uh, validations. Those are the two steps. And in and the data sets here have a characteristics that, that they must have and they have been uh, described here and with the uh, a multivariate analytical uh, procedure and uh, there are uh, samples that are used for the calibration and the validation where well, there is a, a standard test method to see the to do the testing uh, for the uh, true uh, value and about uh, specificity and selectivity and they are are not that different uh, from uh, what was already known, and if there is no, uh, when there is no specific, uh, no selectivity. Uh, so, excuse me. There is no uh, specificity. There has to be a uh, selectivity that has to be proven, and there has to be also a minimization of the interferences. And uh, this. Uh, this is just uh, for your, uh, your reference. So there is not much difference in terms of revisions. So please uh, read them at your own 
leisure. And about uh, the scope of the uh, the test methods, well, the, the highest and the lowest concentration, that is the range that has to be uh, looked at. And there are two terminology used. And there one is reportable range and a working range. And reportable range uh, refers to uh, the typically given uh, is typically given in the same unit as the specification acceptance criterion and the working range it refers to the lowest and the highest uh, concentration that uh, the analytical uh, procedure provides uh, uh, the meaningful uh, results because if there is uh, going to be of any of a uh, dissolution that the the concentration could be lower and that is why the lowest and highest concentration has to be uh, included here what well, that's what here means and also uh, here linear non-linear uh, response uh, or uh, was already included in the previous uh, definition but the multivariate response has newly been added that is why you see at the bottom a multivariate uh, response and then there is also the lower range uh, limits and this uh, uh, refers to detection and quantitation uh, limit and as for the methods to approve them well there are no any uh, changes over uh, here in the new of uh, revision however within the submission uh, data they, when you provide detection and quantitation a limit, you have in the task you used to provide a signal to nodes, and they were not sometimes not checked with the chromatography, and the actually calculated methods uh, has to be confirmed with the chromatography in the new. Uh, according to the new uh, revision. And related to the accuracy and precision, there's not much uh, uh, change here. And the accuracy and precision can be evaluated in combination. That's what has been added newly. And related to the accuracy and precision, if you look at the uh, uh, recommended data, well, that nothing much has changed. However, the uh, there has to be a uh, when representing the difference between the average uh, value and uh, the true value, there has to be uh, emph the emphasis on the uh, ability to check uh, the real uh, value, that is the truth, uh, the, the value that was mentioned here. And same with the uh, precision. And I just said that it's possible to do the evaluation of the accuracy and precision in combination. And, and so uh, the uh, evaluated value must be, in this case, a combined uh, value of, of, of accuracy and precision value. And then about the robustness. And in the uh, submission data, the uh, robustness just because you have not uh, you know submitted data about the robustness does not mean we ask for additional data however uh, when uh, setting the ranges in testing and when uh, for the samples if you are going to be mentioning about the safety uh, range uh, and about the storage uh, conditions and if you're going to have a, a wider scope of the scope uh, submission then as uh, the justification you have to have a robustness uh, data and in q2 the biggest one of the biggest uh, changes is related to the mentioning of the robustness in q14 instead of q2 so in q2 well the uh, the uh, test of uh, method uh, parameters that were mentioned in Q2 were described in details. And however, those details or the description is gone. And in uh, next to uh, the according to uh, multiple test methods, uh, uh, there are some examples of robustness at uh, tests. And they are to be uh, referenced to do the validation. So that's what has uh, changed in the revision. And uh, this uh, was something that I explained with the figure one and also about the uh, the performance characteristics I and about the assessment of the such uh, performance uh, are shown here in the form of this figure.
In the next two, uh, it describes illustrative examples uh, for analytical uh, techniques. So for each uh, parameter, what needs to be checked is uh, described here in the next uh, next two. And about uh, the there is, however, it doesn't mention about uh, the uh, the range. However, these examples says that uh, for each product. So this can be uh, applied to uh, different products depending on uh, the characteristics of those products. Now let's move on to Q14. And this is the table of contents that is related to Q14. And the objective of Q14, as you can see here, is to describe science and risk-based approaches for developing and maintaining analytical procedures in line with Q8 and Q9. And it also outlines a minimal approach and elements of an enhanced approach for analytical uh, procedure development. It also, of course, talks about the difference between these two approaches and also provides guidance on how principles described in ICH-12 uh, can support change uh, management in analytical uh, procedures. And also, it describes considerations for the development of multivariate analytical procedures and for real-time releasing uh, testing. And it also uh, includes a submission considerations of analytical procedure development and related lifecycle information in the CTD format. And about the Q2, it's, uh, excuse me, the scope is same as Q2. And there could be a minimal approach and enhanced approach when it comes to analytical procedure development. And minimal approach, something this is something that we know. Uh, this is a traditional uh, approach. And enhanced approach, uh, it's, it's going to be based on risk assessment. So based on better knowledge or the understanding about the analytical method, more uh, a flexible approach can be used. That's what it means here. Uh, analytical uh, target uh, profile, which is uh, ATP, uh, should be defined as part of the elements of the enhanced approach. And there has to be conduction of risk assessment and the utilization of prior knowledge in order to uh, decide whether going to, whether uh, the test should be done for a uni or multi variate experiment, or and this and they can also, these uh, experiments can use to define the analytical procedures, uh, procedure control uh, strategy. And if I may uh, describe what ATP is, ATP is an element of the enhanced approach, and it's a prospective a summary of the performance characteristics uh, describing intended purpose and anticipated performance a criteria of analytical uh, measurements. And uh, ATP uh, should be maintained over the life uh, cycle. And uh, these are the examples of ATP. And that those examples are made available in Annex 2. And here, here it's looking at the quantification of impurities. And so the uh, so here it talks about accuracy, precision, and specificity, and the reportable uh, range, and also. It talks about. Uh, the uh, the acceptance uh, criteria for these uh, characteristics, and these uh, criteria uh, through another uh, method, or or because of the uh, changes in, in the test method, uh, even if they occur, this criteria should be maintained without a change, and this is a figure that I showed uh, previously. And so if the ATP is applied or the ATP is defined, then uh, the test method uh, that is appropriate for that ATP has to be uh, selected. And when using that method and the uh, test method uh, parameters uh, should be checked in this point and, and the parameters that has to be uh, uh, the parameters uh, should be a set uh, has to be confirmed with the set points or uh, by uh, setting on the range of the tests. And about knowledge management, the prior knowledge 
well is explicitly or implicitly used for informing decisions during analytical procedure development life cycle and management and about uh, risk management in well uh, risk assessment tools mentioned in q9 could be utilized for the risk management or iskawa diagram could be utilized uh, to check with the potential impact uh, on the uh, performances and he also it's possible to check at the uh, to identify the analytical procedure uh, parameters and also robustness uh, this is about a measure of its capacity to meet the expected performance criteria uh, during a uh, normal use and uh, the and if, it, if, if, the, if the robustness evaluation is done, then there's, uh, the has not, uh, this does not have to be checked as part of the uh, validation study. And if the outcome of the evaluation of the robustness should be is, is uh, documented, it, can be, it should also be reflected in analytical procedure and control as strategy. And I want to talk about MODR. It, it's about combined ranges for two or more analytical procedure parameters within which the analytical procedure is shown to be fit for the intended uh, purpose. And so, and so this is, so within this range, that is within the range of MODR, the performance characteristics must be maintained. And if PAR and MODR are accepted and the changes within this range is not looked at as the uh, as changes and and the PAR and the MODR uh, should be uh, or must be covered as as part of the validation uh, data and about analytical uh, procedure control as uh, strategies and uh, it includes a uh, includes, uh, SST and this is uh, as well an SST uh, depends on the type and intent of the analytical procedure and SST is designed to verify selected analytical procedure attributes and the criteria should be based on analytical procedure performance uh, criteria and about uh, when uh, defining established conditions for the analytical procedures, well, it should be done in line with ICH Q12. And the tools that are used for this purpose is included in Chapter 2, utilizing the uh, minimal approach as well as enhanced approach. And if these are defined based on the minimal approach, then most of the parameters uh, because no risk, uh, risk assessment has been done, these, uh, uh, these parameters most will be set as ECs and they will be set as important uh, conditions. And when there are changes in ECs, and it's not going to, well, it has to be managed as change uh, control uh, submission. And if the ECs are defined as part of the enhanced approach, and then and the uh, items within the AECs could be reduced and also uh, the, uh, the changes uh, could be only uh, be uh, reported on an annual basis if needed. And uh, ECs are made up of ATP as well as analytical procedure principle, SSST and sample suitability assessment criteria and set points and or uh, ranges. And as for the enhanced approach, and if the ECs are proposed based on the enhanced approach, and the reporting category uh, could be uh, be proposed by sponsors and uh, there has to be a communication with the regulatory uh, parties uh, and these are quite important part of the communication and when proposing and the ECs the uh, 
uh, the assessment has to be done in uh, advance and, and proposed in accordance with the uh, results of the assessment. And this is what is included in the annex. And so throughout the whole life cycle, uh, these uh, these uh, conditions have to be satisfied. Uh, for instance, the uh, performance characteristics and the criteria as described in the ATP have the overall risk category of high, and uh, their proposed reporting category is also PA. And uh, if the the column uh, specification as well as the equipment uh, use. Uh, if the robustness uh, uh, test shows that if the uh, these uh, criteria do not impact the results, then the risk category uh, will be uh, lower, and uh, the proposed reporting category could also be uh, lowered. And so. Also, the bridging study, more appropriate bridging study, be done based on better understanding, and the ATP could also form the basis of a PACMP, and through a bridging study, the results from those bridging study, and if they are appropriate, they are shown to be appropriate, then. Uh, even if those changes require approval, they could be uh, lowered at a lower level, that is, as uh, just a reporting and category. And uh, this is a table that is also available in Q12. And if the bridging study, uh, you know, what sort of impact would that, it shows that what sort of impact it would have on the reporting category uh, definition. And related to multivariate analytical procedures, and this is more uh, described in more detail as and what needs to be considered during the development process. And also about uh, there are some annex in the annex B of it provides examples of multivariate model lifecycle uh, components. And also, according to the Q2, is the basis for the application of the RT and RT, and it uses a multivariate methods. And so, the multivariate test methods uh, related the principles, and uh, the uh, method could be uh, utilized. And about the uh, CTD related to analytical procedure or test methods, S42. And P52 are the sections that describe the analytical procedure uh, description. And if the enhanced approach is applied, then ATP and the MODR and PAR, these parameters are to be applied. And uh, as for the 4.3 and 5.3, uh, this is related to the submission of validation data and uh, related to ECs and robustness and the reporting category of uh, selections. So the data that have been included for those activities must be submitted as part of S4.3 and P5.3. And in Annex A, it uh, provides are for illustrative purpose only. It also suggests the concepts uh, that are described in ICH Q14. These are the major uh, considerations. These are overall uh, information. And uh, Q14 and Q2 guidelines should be applied in line with other uh, ICHQ uh, guidelines. And Q2 includes a latest uh, scientific and analytical uh, validation approaches. And in Q14, minimal approach, in the approach, are as proposed as part of Q14, and enhanced approach is not mandatory, but but utilizing an enhanced approach, there is a, a flexibility provided in terms of regulatory as submission, and and, uh, and the enhanced approach does not mean that the the data is less detailed. 
and both the they are uh, both and robustness and and SST are important for these uh, both approaches, and this is related to uh, the implementation. So uh, with this, I would like to end my presentation. Thank you.